Hello and welcome to another Advent of Code video. In this one, we're going to be talking about day one of 2020. Uh, I'm going to be going over my solutions as well as a couple different ways to approach these problems. Uh, if you don't want spoilers, this video is not for you, but hopefully I should teach you a few things as we go along. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm not allowed to show the actual pros to the problem, so we're going to look at uh, a simplified version of the problem. I'm going to try and do this at the beginning of each of the days. And the input for these problems, and we're actually going to do the parsing of that input first. Um, I've, I've kind of split all these problems up into parsing and then the actual execution of the problem, because I find that some days the parsing is more important than others, and the, you know, the actual implementation is kind of the interesting part. Uh, but anyway, we're going to have input as a series of numbers, which looks something like this. My input was much longer than this, but this is the sample input. Uh, and you are supposed to find the two numbers which add up to 2020, and then the answer is the multiplication of those two numbers. That's for part one. For part two, it's the same idea, except instead of two numbers, it is now three numbers. And so let's do the parsing. The parsing for this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, in this case, I've made S a, you know, a multi-line string here, and we are going to loop over the lines in this input and generate a list of integers from them. Um, and we're going to be using a function called split lines. I find that split lines is pretty useful for advent of code. Um, in our case, I can just use a list comprehension to do this. So we're going to do int uh, line for line in s dot split lines, split lines. And so that should parse our input pretty pretty easily. Python three parsing dot pi. Uh, oh, <laughs> I forgot to import our types from typing import list. I decided to type annotate things anyway. And you can see that we're able to retrieve our list values here. So that's that's the parsing part, pretty straightforward. Split lines is a little bit helpful. Int allows you to convert a string into an integer. Uh, let's move on to part one. And I have just copied that, you know, integer list over here because it's not, <laughs> it's not super, you know, it's not super helpful to reproduce that parsing code again in here. That'll just confuse you. Uh, but anyway, let's take this input list, and uh, we're given an expected value for this, so we need to compute this. Now, the first thing uh, when I saw this is that you would loop over all the values and then loop over all the other values. And that's probably the easiest and most straightforward way to solve this problem. Um, but we're going to talk about a couple other solutions as well. So let's implement that one first. I'll talk about the algorithmic efficiency for that one. Um, so for x in input and for y in input if x plus y is equal x plus y is equal to 2020 then you know return x times y and uh, oops x times y and otherwise uh you know raise not uh, raise assertion error unreachable that way you know if for some reason that the code is wrong you'll get an error in this case and so if we run this python 3 part 1 dot pi uh, you'll see we do in fact get the value that we expect. Now, if we go to analyze the algorithmic efficiency of this right here, uh, this loop here is O n, and this loop is O n, um, which together means that this is O of n squared. So overall, overall O of n squared. And we can improve this a little bit. We can improve this by, uh, you know that if you're looking at a particular x in the list that you only have to look to the ones after you. So we could uh, improve this ever so slightly. It doesn't actually change the overall on, but it does improve this a little bit. So we can do i x in enumerate. Enumerate gives you both the index of the value as well as all of the values after that. And, um, I would say that you could do i colon here to only loop to through the things after this, uh, but this actually makes a copy of the list each time. However, you know, for for the sake of discussion, let's assume that it doesn't make the copy. You could do this with uh, import iter tools and do iter tools dot i slice input an i. That way, it doesn't do an extra copy because the extra copy would actually make this, you know. <laughs> And, and cubed, which we don't want to do, that actually makes it worse. Um, this slice makes it so we parse less of the list. Um, it's it's more like O n of uh, n over two, but 
you know, the constants go away when you're talking about O N of O N notation. So this will be faster than this one up here, but uh, asymptotically the same. Now we can improve on this code here with the double for loops, and we'll actually use iter tools to do that. Oh, let's um let's print all these to make sure that they still work. Compute for loops. Uh, compute for loops faster. Compute for loops. And those should produce the same value. They do, good. So we can actually improve on the code here, not necessarily the runtime. Uh, but there's a helpful function in inner tools called combinations. And what combinations does is essentially the same as this double for loop. It gives you every single com every single n length combination of values out of this um, list here. So if we do compute iter tools combinations uh, for x comma y in iter tools dot combination. So combinations takes two things. One is the list. And the other is the length of the values. And so in our case, our length of values is two. If we can say if x is equal to, or x plus y is equal to 2020, then return x times y. And we can again copy this bit of code here if it weren't going through like that. So we can do print compute inner tools combinations, and that one should give us the same value as well. Uh, now this one's a little bit harder to talk about the algorithmic efficiency because we don't actually see the implementation of iter tools combinations, um, but I'll just let you know that uh, this n is the exponent in the big O notations here. So uh, this is O of n squared as well. Now we can actually improve on O of n squared here. And the way we're going to do that is by using a set. So we're gonna do compute uh, set. And in this case, we are going to, again, loop through our input, but what we're going to do is we're going to record all the values we previously seen, and then we can compare against those and see whether um, one of those adds up to 2020. And accessing a set here, we're going to assume is O1, um, and building a set is going to be at most ON. So we're going to make a scene set, and for X in input, uh, if 2020 minus X in scene, so if we've already seen, oh, we need to actually make a set. If we've already seen a value that when added to X would be 2020, then we know we're at our answer. And so we can say, uh, return 2020 minus X times X. Um, otherwise we can add that value to scene, scene dot add X. And again, like if we don't ever find a solution somehow our data is now formed in some way, we can raise an assertion error. So this is yet another way to solve this problem. Print compute set, and that should give us the same value, and it does. But anyway, those are kind of the four solutions that I thought of for this problem. So you know, just the, the easiest one to think of, double for loops, uh, slightly faster double for loops, combinations which, which gets rid of the two for loops, and then finally our set here. Oh, and let's talk about the algorithmic efficiency. So this is O, n, um, this is O1, so overall, oh, and this is O1 as well. Uh, so overall, this is, you know, O n times O1, or overall O of n. Now in my, uh, in my actual problem, I found that this didn't actually perform much faster than this, if at all. Uh, so the, the constant time for adding to a set might be much higher than actually looping through this loop. So in reality, this one might not be any faster. But anyway, that's part one. Uh, those are the solutions that I did for part one. Part two is actually gonna look a lot similar to this. Um, so let's open up part two. Now in part two, uh, instead of doing two numbers, we're now doing three numbers, which makes this a little bit more complicated. Um, I thought of three main solutions to this. Um, again, we have our, you know, just our plain and simple for loops one where you have four X in input and then four Y in input and then for z in input if x times y or x plus y plus z is equal to 2020 then return x times y times z uh, raise assertion error unreachable so this is again like the 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 simplest one that i can think of compute for loops 
And if we run that, right, 2.py, you'll see that we get this, this value that we expected there. Now again, uh, we saw that same trick when we had these multiple for loops. We can also use iter tools combinations here. Import iter tools. Uh, compute iter tools combinations to int. And uh, we can do 4x, y, z in iter tools uh, combinations. Oh, we should talk about the uh, algorithm efficiency, I guess. This is on. This is on, and this is on. So overall, this is O of n uh, cubed. And if we do iter tools combinations down here again, sorry, I'm jumping around. <laughs> and we want a combination of length three. That way, we get out you know the three values here, and we can actually just copy and paste this condition here. So let's get this whole chunk of code there. That way, I don't have to copy paste that. And uh, this is our solution here. So we're checking each combination adds up to 2020 and then return their product. So if we go down here, compute iter tools combinations. We should see that we have two solutions. And the last solution that I thought of, um, well, oh, we should talk about on. This is O of n raised to this exponent. So it's n cubed, so it's not any faster algorithmically than the for loops one. And then we have our last one, which uh, again, looks similar to the first one. We abuse sets again to shave off one of these exponents here and uh, compute sets. In this case, we're gonna have, um, you know, instead of having a scene set, we're gonna have input inputs as a set. And again, this is O of N. And instead of doing the three combinations here, we're gonna do the two combinations and see if their their counterpart is an in input. So for x comma y in iter tools dot combinations input two. Again, I could do this with for loops. This is O of n squared. If x if 20, 20 minus x minus y in inputs, then return x times y times 20, 20 minus x minus y and here's an error here now overall uh when you do two operations side by side you add them so o n plus n squared is just n squared um and up here i forgot to mention earlier when you do an operation to the inside of another operation they multiply so n times n times n is n cubed let's do this last one here print compute sets and we should again get the same value and interestingly, I actually saw that this was this was slower than the combinations one. So even though it's algorithmically faster, the, the constant for um, building this set is probably higher and probably due to memory pressure or something else. Um, but anyway, those are those are the solutions that I got for part one and part two. Um, so you can see these on screen. Um, but hopefully this was was useful or interesting. Uh, I'm going to continue trying to build these for every single day, so I'll see you for part, or for day two. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.